Dr. Mark Hillmeyer has declared war on plastic pollution. His secret weapon is this small piece of synthetic material. It literally melts away at the sight of him, because Mark is the deplastinator. His vision, plastic that's environmentally friendly and dissolves once it's been used. Our hero's base, the University of Minnesota. Mark has been teaching chemistry here for 21 years, but his real passion is research, working on the plastic of the future. I love how you can turn organic molecules into materials that have such amazing properties, but I also have a passion and strong motivation to do things that are, have societal benefit. Mark wants to create plastic that doesn't pollute the environment, but is as versatile as conventional plastics. It should also be completely recyclable. And where is our science hero developing the plastic of the future? In this university laboratory. Here, the world of plastic is quietly being revolutionized. Mark isn't working on it alone. Like other superheroes, he has sidekicks. Derek, Claire, and Guillaume. The team did not come together for money or fame, but for a mission. By 2050, there's going to be more plastic in the ocean than fish. So um, by sustainably deriving plastic, we can continue to use these materials. It's probably the biggest social issue of my time. It's a problem I think everybody should care about because I think everybody uses plastic. A fight for a better future. The Deplastinator and his team are doing it for us. Their opponent, the evil plastic vortex. He and his trash have got our planet firmly in their grip. Five huge trash vortexes are poisoning the oceans. Every year, eight million tons of new plastic waste lands in the oceans, most of it packaging. Plastic decomposes extremely slowly. A plastic bottle lives for up to 450 years after being thrown away. Sure, there are alternatives, plastic from seaweed or plastic from fungi, but they are still very expensive and often use up a lot of energy during production. But the deplastinator obviously has the answer. His team's plastic is organic and recyclable. But how do they do it? The raw material for their plastic is lignin. A principal component of a lot of plant material is lignin, which is in trees, it's in um, grass, it's in essentially almost every plant that you, that you find. So the main ingredient really is organic. Derek adds two equally environmentally friendly premixes. This liquid will be transformed into organic plastic. The first step, a water bath. After about an hour, something has happened. That is essentially the consistency of honey. And that's because all of those small molecules that were in there before are now holding hands and it's a lot of large molecules trying to move over each other. The three ingredients have blended together and become viscous. Derek stirs this mixture again, this time with a mechanical blender. And then, the most important additive, isocyanates, a group of chemical compounds. And they make the mixture foam. And the liquid quickly becomes solid. This is now plastic. When you do this on a large scale, you get a big slab of polyurethane foam. And from that, you core out these sections um, or slabs and you make slab stock foam and they are sent to various industries for um, use in a number of different applications. Um, cushioning. So this is real bioplastic. With the same characteristics as plastic foam from fossil fuels, which is often used in packaging or, as already mentioned, in cushions. I love it. It tells me that we can make foams that are competitive with commercial-based foams in terms of their 
uh, how stiff they are, how resilient they are, they bounce back, how soft they are, and, and how strong they are. But Mark's plastic can do even more. When it's no longer needed, it supposedly disintegrates back into its original materials. A real first in the world. Well, normally, films are recycled by downcycling, so um, you can turn them into another material, but they don't have the same mechanical properties or integrity. What we're going to do is chemically recycle the foam. So you take the foam and you turn it back into the original liquid monomer state, and you can take that monomer and turn it into a foam that has the same mechanical properties. Turn the plastic back into the original liquid. This is made possible with a combination of cold and hot. On one side, a container is placed into ice-cold liquid nitrogen. And under this aluminium hat, Claire heats up the plastic. What's happening is that the foam is depolymerizing, meaning that that network that we formed is starting to um, break apart back into the original liquid monomer. And so you can see the liquid coming out of the flask and over into the other flask. And sure enough, the lignin, which started the whole process, is now recollecting in the cold container. What has happened there? The three main ingredients hold the plastic firmly together. When it's heated, these bonds are severed. The materials decompose back into their original form. The lignin evaporates and rises. It's cooled down in the cannula. Thus, the lignin liquefies again. This is chemical recycling. It's a bit like turning cheese back into milk, if that were possible. Looks like we recovered a good fraction of the, of the starting material back that we can use for a new foam. So I think that's the idea here, is we can recover uh, the original starting materials after the end of life of the foam and then generate new foam from that. The material can thus be reused almost indefinitely. Right now, this process is still very expensive. But as soon as this bioplastic goes into mass production, this could change quickly. It makes me feel optimistic about the idea of this chemical recycling and really making useful products uh, from old, you know, kind of chemically recycling an old product and making something new, it makes me feel optimistic about the future of, uh, of plastics in the world. Industry has already begun to take notice. From foam to hard plastics, at some point, they want to be able to replace all plastics with biological counterparts and then allow them to decompose again. The plastic of the future. For this, the de-plastinator certainly deserves his superhero's cape and someday maybe even the Nobel Prize.